just this last week, Honda announced that to fix a car properly, you have to have Honda information. You have to do every single thing we say. And if you're not a certified shop, you can't see it. Mm. New ball game. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And I, incredible. from what I'm seeing, that's, that's going to be the lay of the land within two years. I think so. I think so. But I understand why. I understand yeah. why. And so today, um, appraisal clause is being used more and more for repair issues. Mm-hmm. You know, um, five years ago, I did three or four a year. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And wow. today, uh, I could do as much of it as I want to. Wow. So because now, I- let me ask you about... <laughs> the fact that you're going, I, I'm always mesmerized when people are like in court for things. Cause then, you know, it just feels so much more serious. Like, Ooh, what's going on? <laughs> Spill yeah. the tea, Charles. <laughs> well, it's interesting to me that it really escalates to that level. So at, what are the types of cases then that you're seeing that escalate to a point where they're actually in a court, you're having to present evidence, that type of thing. What are those types of things that you're getting involved in? Well, most recently, um, the other thing that appraisal clause is used for, uh, when a car gets in a wreck, a lot of people think that it's worth less money just because it's been in a wreck. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they file a diminished value claim. Now, mm-hmm. first parties can't do that. This is a second party thing. Mm. So that's not appraisal clause stuff. And I'm getting a little off topic, but it's, it's one of those things that, that you go and present opinions. Okay. Because if you're talking about the value of a car, there are no facts. Right, right. There's some evidence and there's strong opinions. Mm-hmm. And, and if you can gather enough information and, and comps, you know, mm-hmm. um, an interesting one from years ago, um, guy had a Mercedes, had a, had a collision, needed repairs. Um, he said, oh, and the suspension's broke. There was no way, absolutely no way the suspension was affected by that little hit. Ah. But he was convinced. Mm-hmm. And so he hired an independent appraiser. The insurance mm-hmm. company hired me. I was able to discover where he had had that suspension fixed twice. Oh, wow. One of the worst things Mercedes ever did. It was a very complicated hydro pneumatic mm-hmm. with air and it was very sensitive. Mm-hmm. And um, so he took it to small claims court mm. and I had to show up because here in Texas, if I'm not present, my report is hearsay. Oh, interesting. So I didn't even testify. I sat in the back of the room and was introduced and I stood up and said, hi, judge. And that was it. Okay. Read my report, dismissed the case. Wow. You know, wow. the first time I was in court, it was a little intimidating. And then when I saw the judge put his pencil down and lean back mm. because of something I had just said. Wow. That's pretty cool. I thought, oh, wow. This is fun. It was a rush. You know? and, <laughs> yeah. And, and, we went, and everybody was happy. Well, not everybody. Yeah, but, right, right. <laughs> so, yes, the shops that, that, are, that are having difficulties getting paid for what they need to be done, needs to be done to the car. Mm-hmm. This is one of the tools, you know. I, yeah. would, I would prefer to see it as a, um, you know, last on the list of options. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, it's nice, however we want to phrase it, the frustration is the payment isn't being, it's a fight to get payment for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and the way we do that is, is to provide information, you know. Mm-hmm. And if that information um, runs into a stone wall, then we have an option. That's then, right. Then we get into the repair issues and that's much more complex. Mm-hmm. And I still charge the same because we're, we've kind of flat rated everything. Right. It takes me 10 times more work. Mm, I bet. Yeah. Depending on the shop, if the shop does an outstanding job on their estimate and their documentation, mm-hmm. then I'm going to get a file pretty thick. Yeah. Right. Because I'm going to get the estimate line by line with, mm-hmm. with notes explaining what happened. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get every procedure that's referenced for everything they're doing on the car. Mm-hmm. Those are the easy ones. Cause I don't have to yeah. that stuff. <laughs> yes. Well, that's so, ideal. And then armed with that information, I can make a phone call to the other appraiser and we can go over it line by line. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. And he's going to say, well, we don't normally do that. I can say, well, okay, here's why you need to do that. Mm-hmm. Here's, the document. And here's the document that says that's not recommended. That's required which is another thing that's changing mm-hmm. because the lawyers wanted soft right. words and people interpret those soft words as meaningless. That's, that's <laughs> exactly the frustration. You nailed it right on the head. Yeah. And I can't find the document again, but um, a few months ago, uh, General Motors basically said, if we, when, every time we use the word recommended, we meant to say required. <laughs> and yeah. I'm saying the same thing now. 
Um, yeah. And, and so that's that's where the industry is going. Yeah. This is another one of those those forks in the road where you know five years from now it's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Right. It'll evolve. But we still got this tool. Yeah. And so well, it's, I think it's great. I think it's great that we talked about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you defined it very clearly. I feel like I totally get it. But if you didn't totally get it, or if you think of questions after this podcast, or you've got some right now, Charles is available. You can contact him down in the description. You'll find his email and his website address. If you have questions or you want to chit chat, he's an awesome guy, as you can see, uh, totally informative and willing and has a heart to help the industry and the people in it, which I love. Um, and I'm, I'm sure we'll probably get off this and I'll be like, you know what else I thought of? <laughs> So you may get an email from me, Charles, but uh, I'm here for our shops listening and watching. And even for people that aren't in the collision industry that will come upon this podcast, this is great information to know because it's, we can always be the best we can be when we know we've got a tool belt full of quality, useful tools. And this is one of those things that when you need it, it's good to know you got it because otherwise you look back and go, wait a minute, I could have done that. How many people are listening right now thinking, man. It's unusual for me to find a vehicle owner, policyholder that knows about this, mm. but it's not that unusual for me to, to find a shop owner that, or an estimator especially, that, that's unaware. Because it's mm-hmm. never come up, you know. I do want to put one caveat in here. Yeah. I, I said it at the beginning, but I'm going to say it again. This is a tool for either side. Yep. Now, we, we kind of got got focused on the, the whole repairability and and the some individuals in the, in the insurance world being a little slow to adapt. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes you get a shop that's the outlier. Right, right. Then, and this happens a lot in total loss, uh, the insurance mm-hmm. company may be the one to invoke the appraisal clause mm-hmm. because they've kind of exhausted their internal resources. Right. The conversation's halted. Right, right. We had to be throwing bricks at each other, but we're not communicating anymore. Yes. And so, um, you know, uh, uh, those of you who, who uh, click on my website, you'll find a little paragraph there that basically says you're hiring an expert. Don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> I was going to I was going to bring that up. My favorite part of your whole website is with something along the lines and maybe you changed it or something. If you're hiring me to give your opinion, go somewhere else. Basically. <laughs> you're, you're basically quoting me. I was paraphrasing. Yes. yes. <laughs> but yeah, there, I consider my job to be largely one of an educator. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't fight with people to get what I want. Right. I, I, inform people so they can make an informed decision. Yes, absolutely. The best of my peers in this business, that's, that's what we do. Yeah. So it's right. not a big conflict. Right, right. It's an interesting conversation sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure. And, I'm and sometimes sure. there's just there's just a dead stall. Mm. And then other times there's you can almost hear them throwing the pen down and say, okay, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> because you put the document in their hands. What are they going to do? <laughs> right. Well, it's the evidence. I mean, it's, it's going to speak for itself at the end of the day, but this allows two parties that again, aren't emotionally involved and aren't financially involved to just come to the table, hash yeah. it out, create a solution. So everybody can move on with their lives. I mean, that sounds wonderful <laughs> to me. Cause I hear a lot of horror stories of the back and the forth and the hard feelings and people are upset. And this really kind of takes that out of and the I know, equation. I know a couple of shops that if, if they see that's where it's going, they just initiate, they, they counsel the customer to initiate yeah. this fairly, fairly quickly. Absolutely. So it can get done in a timely fashion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you wanted to add? Because I think this is amazing. I really hope that everybody watching and listening is like, has learned a little something today. <laughs> I hope so too. And I'm, and as you said, I am open to questions. Um, if we get down to a specific case, I may have to charge you at some point, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I've actually covered all my bullet points I had on my notes here. Perfect. Good job. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Charles, for coming on the show and talking with us. Thank you for being a part of our industry and helping bring the two sides, I guess, if we want to call it together for the benefit of everyone, really. And I love that about you and what you do. And thank you. Keep it up. (laughs) So take care, everybody. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next time on Body Bangin'. Bye. 
If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We have some incredible topics and guests coming your way you will not want to miss. If you are watching on YouTube and don't want to miss the latest and greatest, you'll want to hit the bell after subscribing so you will get a pop-up each time a video podcast goes live. To our devoted fans, would you mind paying it forward and sharing this little gem with someone else you think may benefit from it? Much love from all of us here at Body Bangin', all things Autobody.